Hey y'all. So today we're talking about grief. I'm in it. So why not journey this oh so comfortable space together? What could the grief experience hold? What may it not hold? What could I do when someone I love or care about is in this situation when I may not be? A quick reminder. We all have to remember that we don't all experience grief the same. So approaches may have to differ. Also remember, this does not take the place of psychotherapy or medical care, and nor should it. I am your host, Lonnie Lamb, and this is Space Invaders. So what are we talking about today? All right, here's the deal. Because I'm never like very good at redoing episodes, so I gave myself a good couple weeks to just breathe through what the last episode was going to be about that I was going to put up here. Um, and here we are. And I think that it's okay. There's a reason that this happened the way it did. (laughs) So if you follow my blog, which is called human on Substack, we'll go ahead and put a link in the bottom of the bio or wherever the links are put. If you follow that, then you know that I recently lost a parent and, and I've been navigating grief. I've been navigating that loss. And, um, what I have found is that in my creative space, that writing right now is really where my creative flow sits. And this is why I have multiple outlets because I have multiple ways of expressing myself and creating that level of artistry that I think a lot of creatives hold. You just need multiple places to be able to express yourself. So I want to piggyback on those posts. So I invite you and I encourage you to go read those because you, I get a little more descriptive about just what it was like to be on the heels of loss. My biggest goal here is to normalize what grief feels like, to normalize loss, to normalize what it's like to be human because we all are. And, and that's what the human, my, the blog human, my blog is called. And that's why I called it that because that's really what the main intention is here is to just connect us in helping you realize you're not alone. It's not psychotherapy, just like this isn't psychotherapy. And if you find that you're in need of that, then I encourage you to go seek further help when it comes and further assistance when assistance, when it comes to your mental health. So here's the deal. First off, it's my day off. Can you tell? (laughs) So no makeup. It's fine. I've gotten to this level at my, in my forties where I'm like, it feels so good to just show up the way I feel like showing up when I don't want to go in and get myself ready for an episode to to come here. Because listen, when you're sitting in grief or loss, yeah, it feels good to get up and and get yourself ready. It definitely does. That is something that, that I have watched other family members do that has been very helpful is it's okay, let's get up. Let's go. Let's go into our day. So here I am in all my glory, (laughs) but anyway, so I'm a couple months out from losing my pops and It has been a ride because it's my first big loss. And, and while I can sit in other losses, this one just brought in a whole new reality, right? It's, it's, it's a very interesting dynamic and place to be. And today we can apply what I'm talking about to any form of loss. So I once heard somebody say there are two things in life that you can't avoid and it's death and taxes. I don't know. Some people may argue, I guess you could avoid taxes, but I don't want to be the recipient of what happens when I avoid. So I don't, I pay my taxes. I pay them. I want to add a third thing to that. And that's loss. At some point in time in your earth human experience, you're going to experience some form of loss. So I want you right now to imagine like what is going on in your body. Okay. And maybe you've come into this podcast and you're like, or this episode and you're like, no, life's really good right now. It's no big deal. I just want you to consider loss as not necessarily death, right? Like the loss of a human, but consider other losses, like the loss of an animal, the loss of a job, the loss of identity, right? Like sometimes we don't transition well from one life transition to the next. Like maybe you're an empty nester. Or maybe you've had a significant medical diagnosis. So loss can occur or feelings of loss can occur in so many lenses. So this can apply to you. It totally can. And what we're going to talk about today is, yes, mine is the loss of a human or another human, a person in my life, but don't run off because this can apply. So here's what I have 
been learning that, and the caveat that I want to bring to you guys today, because maybe you haven't considered something. So my heart feels certain things, like it feels the loss, like it'll go through like the physical ache of that absence in the wake of my dad not being here anymore. And, and I get to get really curious about it. So you will, you may have heard the five stages of grief. Okay. You can go ahead and Google those plug in five stages of grief in Google and it will pull five up. There's actually six, but pull the five up. Okay. And if you're not familiar with them, another reason to get curious about them. The reason I'm not going into them here is because I try not to, I want to be aware of the stages and I think everybody should be aware of them because they include anger. They include denial. They include depression. They include bargaining. They include acceptance, creating meaning around the loss. It's good to be aware of of what these stages are and what types of emotions can be buried in them. Here's where I think that it gets a little limiting is if you are imagining them in stages, there's a possibility, not saying this is everybody, but there's a possibility that when we hear the word stage, we think, oh, eventually it'll be over. And that's not inaccurate, right? We don't want to numb ourselves through them. We want to be curious about what our body is experiencing when it's experiencing it. Because you can't, you, yeah, I guess you can park yourself in front of Netflix for days and days and days, but you know what that's, that's not going to come out pretty on the other end. Okay. On the other side, we can say to ourselves, oh, this anger that I'm feeling, uh, I recognize this is one of those stages of grief. Why am I angry? Not, oh, this is one of those stages of grief. It's so uncomfortable. I need to go drink a glass of wine and or two or three or four until I don't feel this anymore. That's the difference that I'm talking about. I like to think of them as experiences. So I'm experiencing anger or I'm experiencing some depression or I'm experiencing some denial or I'm experiencing. So if you can think of them as an experience, then you don't rob yourself of the wave that comes because they come in waves. And so if when you can gain some tools and sometimes we can gain them, we can maybe find them on social media or we can find them in a book or we can find them listening to a TV show or we can find them listening to a podcast or sometimes we need to go visit a therapist to help us navigate our grief and our loss. So what we want to do is know that, okay, when the wave comes and I've experienced so many of these waves in the last few months that it's okay, getting curious about it And knowing that once I ride that wave, once I'm at the top, when it's just really uncomfortable, that it's going to drop on the other side. Now, here's something to remember. If you get to the top of that wave and it gets so uncomfortable that you start to numb it out, the next wave that comes, y'all, is not going to just go up to where you numbed it to and come down. It's going to peak again, which is why numbing is never really ever the, the answer. And numbing out is not just with drugs and alcohol. We can numb out with shopping. We can numb out with food. We can numb out with gambling. We can numb out in all different ways, binge watching TV when it's been longer than just, I'm going to get through an episode or two or three, right? Because I get it, dude. I can get sucked into some stuff on TV. So giving yourself grace in that process, but riding that wave, sometimes we get stuck at the top and that's when it's okay. I really want to do this, but then we get stuck up there and we're like, I don't know how to come down. I don't know how to do this. And that's something with grief and in loss that I don't think a lot of people realize so many people go through is it's, I'm not handling this. First off, who defines that? Who defines what well is? Okay. And really watch that because if you find that you are getting to a point where you don't know how to come down, that's when you want to seek some mental health assistance with call a therapist that that knows grief, right? Call somebody that can sit across from you and say, Hey, just talk to me about it. Sometimes just being able to talk it out even helps the wave come down or it helps you ride it and bring comes down on the other side. It's not numbing it out. Okay. So that's one of the things that I've realized. The other thing is there's this article that just went out in Forbes and I'm going to try to find it so we can post that too, but it talks about the three brains. And I'm so glad that we're starting to talk about this now because it makes a lot of sense. So in the body, we can consider there to be three brains. We have the brain up here that we all know about. The heart can actually be considered a brain. There's neurons in there and the gut, right? And the main line of communication that runs between all three of those is your vagus nerve, Google vagus nerve. Okay. So that vagus nerve is that line of communication. All right. So if you can imagine when one of your brains gets in a little bit of distress, so like when my dad died, my heart brain 
was like, what is this feeling? Ouch, this hurts to the level of discomfort that like I haven't experienced in this experience, in this part, this stage of life, right? I knew that when this brain right here was going to be in some distress, that my vagus nerve was going to need some assistance in the flow of information, right? Because this brain up here is going to try to name everything that's going on in here. And it can't do that because sometimes we, we don't have words for it. And it's okay that you don't have words for it. It's okay. So I had to make sure that I was constantly engaging in some form of self-care. Okay. And some of the self-care that I'm talking about is like being able to relax yourself, being able to say, this is hard. This is really hard. You may need to cry. You may need to write. You may need to talk to somebody about it. You may, whatever it might be. So being able to process openly, this is so painful. This is my heart feeling that disconnect. So your heart brain is in charge of your social experience, your connection to others, which is wired in us and your emotional feelings, right? So to feel the emotion here and this brain up here is its job is to the reason and logic and naming what's going on in here. And sometimes that's why the brain is just frustrated because it wants to name what's happening and make sense of it. And it can't. And the brain does not like an unfinished puzzle does not like an unfinished story. That's how anxiety starts to happen too, is we have these narratives that go on in our mind and we have to challenge those sometimes because is there reality behind it? Is there truth behind that? Because the brain is trying to grasp for anything that it can to make sense of something, whether it's true or not, okay? So I could chase a really large rabbit on this, but I'm not going to. Okay, so if your heart brain is in that distress because it's now sensed a loss of connection and this brain up here is trying to make sense of that and can't, you can imagine how there could be a little bit of, how do I want to describe it? Interrupted flow of communication between the two. Your gut brain down that sits in the gut when they say, you may catch yourself saying, my gut says, that's your intuition. So the gut is in charge of intuition, safety, nutrition. Okay, so when your gut health this is mind and body connection, y'all. When your gut is healthy, that also helps that flow of information. So health matters. What you put in your body matters. What you put on your body matters. Okay. I could chase another rabbit on that. And I'm not going to. You're welcome. Okay. So with all that being said, I am trying to take in that knowledge and that information when I feel the rush come, when I feel that that wave come. And sometimes the wave can just tickle your toes and you may just get a little tears in your eyes. You may just be like, ah, or the wave that, you know what it's like, like you're at the beach and you're like not paying attention to anything and a wave knocks you out. It can be like that too. When you're just like, geez, you just get yourself knocked out. So grief can come in these waves. And it's like, how are we riding them? How are we navigating through them? So another thing that I've learned to do with myself is I'll notice that when I'm, maybe when I'm sitting in a meditation, and I feel my dog, I don't know if you can hear my dog in the background, but he doesn't know how to, he just has to get up and stretch. He's getting old guys. He's getting old. It's okay. We rescued him. Sometimes I feel like I need to be rescued from him, but it's, we're good. He's laying down now. So I think we're, anyway, I chased the rabbit and now I don't remember what I was talking about. And this is a huge problem. Okay. So sometimes when I'm in my meditation, did you see how I totally landed that back? That's good. Okay, so sometimes in my meditation, I'll get a memory with my dad in it. And what I try to do, depending on how hard the wave hits, I try to go to that part of me that was whatever age I was in that memory, okay? And I tap into her because I don't know, there's something about thinking that maybe that part of me is the part that's in mourning, right? So sometimes if she's young, like if the memory had me and I was maybe like, seven or 10. And I just imagine myself saying to her, Hey, I see you. I know that was a fun day. Even like talking about it, it gets me a little misty talking to you guys about it. This is a very normal reaction that you're going to feel. And when you're talking about somebody that you love, that you've lost or something that was really important to you, like your identity, or maybe you got laid off. This may come up. This is normal to feel this way. It's normal to, it's human. Okay, let's take out normal from it because there's thing that that's a loaded word, normal. What is normal? Who, who wrote that? It's human. It's a human experience to feel an emotion because you have an opinion about what has happened to you. 
Okay. And if everybody is going to feel some sort of loss in their life, we just have to get really real about how we feel about loss, how we feel about grief, because it's not something that has to be numbed away. Like, I think that's a lot of reasons why people feel so alone in it, because if we've come from society and generations that knew no different, but to bury stuff. And I don't know, I, I'm not sure that was the best approach. Okay. But we don't judge that because they knew no different. So if you're listening to me and your generation's older than me, I don't judge you for that. I don't, I, you didn't know what else to do with the emotion. And at that time, maybe we didn't have a lot of tools to know how to manage them, but now we do. So we make change. We make change when we start to see that there's patterns of things not working out in the best interest, when we don't pay attention to the things going on in our life. Okay. Or the feelings that we have and the emotions that we have, let's make some changes. Let's make some adjustments. Okay, so with that all being said, I wanted to remind everybody that again, this isn't psychotherapy. So if you find that it's really hard for you to sit in your emotions, I highly suggest that you contact your nearest therapist. I'm in Texas, also licensed in Idaho. I can sit with people in grief. So it it is, it's not a bad idea to have somebody that you can trust, that you can sit with and just be able to say, that's that look, that's non-biased and there's confidentiality rules. Yes, there are limits. You'll get that explained to you when, when you're in your sessions. But don't be afraid to reach out and say, this is hard shit. It's hard. It hurts. Okay? Life brings this stuff to us for reasons. So where I'm at today is I still sit in waves, y'all. I still sit in waves. I took time off work. I took time away from social media. I took time away from life. I just plugged into me and my family. I also wanted to demonstrate and show the younger people in my home that it's okay to lean in and feel. It's okay to see your mom cry from time to time. It's okay to say, it's okay for me to tell my kids, just give me a second. I'm in a wave. I miss my dad. I miss your grandpa. I, I miss, and my kids go through waves. Okay. So my children are also feeling that energy coming from me, but they're also holding their own they're going to hold their own feelings and their own stories about their loss. So remember that it also doesn't always stay encapsulated. It can come out. Another thought that I just had that I want to make sure I say is when somebody next to you is experiencing some form of loss or grief, you don't have to define it for them. Okay. And if you feel the need to try to take that away from them, that's more of a thing that you need to get curious about rather than them having to make change. Okay. Okay. So if you're uncomfortable when somebody is saying or emotionally showing you that they're hurting, that's about you getting curious about what's going on in you. Okay. It is not our job to try to tell somebody that they should be at a different place in their grief or their loss than they are. Okay. That's not your job. Now, if you notice that somebody needs some help, right? So let's say like, I have a village of people around me that I bring around me. I have very close friends that I've allowed inside. And I have family members and I trust that they're going to come to me if they ever were concerned and they're going to say, Hey, I, have you ever considered talking to somebody like you're not, they're not pushing me through anything. They're just encouraging me to see that, Hey, I see something that maybe you may want to talk further about that. You feel safer talking to a professional or whatever, or maybe you go to your friend and you're talking to your friend and you say, Hey, I'm here. Like, I'm just here to listen. And you don't try to take it away from them because you feel uncomfortable or tell them, hey, it's been this amount of time. Don't you think you should be at a different place? That's not helpful, guys. It pushes people deeper into shame and grief. And if they, if, if they feel like they have to rush it for you, it is not going to t bring their wave down. It could actually prolong their grief. So just keep that in mind. Okay. Always remember self-care when you're in loss. And self-care is whatever you need, whatever it is for you. For me, meditation I do, I do practice sound therapy in my own space. So I go to where there's crystal bowls that give me the bilateral stimulation that I have found has been very beneficial for me. I make sure I get sleep. So if I need to take a nap, I take a nap. That's the other thing that just came to my mind. When you're going through loss, you are in a state of recovery. Okay. So if you have a major surgery, your doctor will say you have just got to rest don't rush into working back out, working out again. Don't rush back into work. Don't rush back. Your body has got to recover. Your heart has to recover. And when your heart is in distress and your brain's not sure what to do about it. And the gut is, are we in danger? Are we safe? Are we scared? What's going on? Your body's going to feel that. 
I had, I, oh, I had two weeks of extreme fatigue right after my dad died. Two weeks. It was like, oh my God, what is this? My body was in recovery. Every cell in my body felt that death. Okay. Every cell. So I had to just let myself, I would sleep and I would sleep. And I, my, my family was supportive of that because I've also have other family members that were navigating it the way they needed to nav navigate it. So just remember, listen to your body. It will tell you what it needs. Okay. Not alcohol, not drugs, not more shopping, not more. Okay. Like really listen to what it needs. You know what I mean by that. All right. If you find that your coping skills are a little questionable, own that truth, own it, and seek help. No judgment. It takes way more courage to be able to sit back and say, I'm not handling this well, and seeking help for that than it does to bury it down and ignore it. Because let me tell you something, the body keeps score. There's a great book called The Body Keeps the Score all about what happens when we bury. Your body keeps track of it, y'all. And your health starts to suffer, your physical health, your mental health, maybe even your spiritual health, it all starts to suffer. I hope this has been helpful for y'all in knowing that I'm also human, right? And even as a therapist, I'm going through stuff. And it's my job to take care of myself so I can show up for you right? Because it's what I love to do. I love sitting with people on a daily basis. I love it. I chose this path. So I also have a responsibility to take care of myself so that I can show up the best helper that I possibly can for other people. Okay. I visit my therapist once a month to get a tune-up. There doesn't need to be any major thing going on in my life. I believe in therapy. So I have my own therapist that I've been with. That I sit with once a month and I just say, hey, I, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter what it's about, but it's a place to just go and tune tune up here. You go into your physicals, your physical, once a year, I guess there's people that don't, right? But it's that your physical health requires that. Do it for your mental health. And if you're sitting in grief, you're not alone. And it's not always the loss of a person. So be kind to yourself. Return to yourself. What does it look like to return to yourself? Okay. All right. I'm Lonnie Lamb. I'm your host of this podcast called Space Invaders. You can find me at Lonnie Lamb Counseling on Instagram and on Facebook. You can find Human, my blog on Substack. Go read it, guys. Go read it. It's free. You just put your email in and you get the entries. All right. Okay. I'll see you on the other side of all of this. <laughs>